Greetings to you all in the name of Christ on this Sunday morning, the 12th of July. My name is Reverend Catherine Bland and on behalf of the Preston Ribble Methodist Circuit, I wish you a very warm welcome to this act of worship. This is our second Sunday of uh, Bible Month that we're following in the Book of Ruth. And the theme for this Sunday is the faithfulness of God, the faithfulness of God. And so I'd like to uh, share with you by way of our call to worship these words. Loving God, always there for us, we come into your presence to worship and to praise you. Loving God, always calling us, we come into your presence to listen for your voice. Loving God, always ready to forgive, we come into your presence to know your forgiving love. And loving God, always ready to receive us, we come into your presence so that you will help us to share your love with others. Loving God, always there for us, we come to worship and to praise you. Let us pray. God, who created all cultures and peoples, all places and philosophies, we rejoice in the diversity of your creation. We are amazed at the love that you focus on it, the lengths you are willing to go to show your people your love, to help us live as your people with you as our God. We confess that we use the variety and complexity of your creation as a source of discord and prejudice, that we, are con we consciously exclude people from our love and unconsciously act against others, that when we look at our lives, we are bitter and unforgiving. Forgiving God, give us the grace to forgive ourselves and others. We thank you for your faithfulness, for taking us far beyond our own perspective, for creating in us the potential to see the challenges and rise to them, for enabling us to care for our world and each other. In Jesus' name, we rejoice in your presence with us and give you thanks. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from Romans 8, starts from verse 35 and ends at 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God bless its reading and help us to understand those great mysteries of the world. Nor depth, nor all of creation. 
into the fields to gather leftover corn behind anyone who will let me do it. Naomi replied, All right, my daughter. So Ruth went out to gather corn behind the harvesters. And as it happened, she found herself working in the field that belonged to Boaz, her father-in-law's relative. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted his harvesters. The Lord be with you. Then he asked them, Who is that girl over there? The foreman replied, she is the young woman who came back from Moab with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather corn behind the harvesters. She has been hard at work ever since, apart from resting for a few minutes in the shelter. Boaz went over to Ruth and said, Listen, my daughter, stay right here with us. Do not go to any of the fields. Stay with the women working in my field. I have warned the men not to bother you. When you are thirsty, you can help yourself to their water. Ruth fell at his feet. Why are you being so kind to me? I am only a foreigner. Yes, I know, but I have heard about the love and kindness you have shown to your mother-in-law since your husband died. I have heard how you left your father and mother and your own country to live here among strangers. May the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come to seek safety, reward you fully. Then, at lunchtime, Boaz said, Come over here and help yourself to some of our food. Dip your bread in our wine. And Boaz gave her more food than she could eat. He said to his workers, Let her gather corn as you harvest. Do not stop her. Drop some barley on purpose so that she can pick it up. Do not give her a hard time. That day, Ruth gathered 18 litres of grain. She took it home to Naomi and gave her the food that was left over from lunch. Naomi asked her, Where did all this come from? Where did you work? God bless the person who helped you. Ruth told her that the man was named Boaz. May God bless him. He is showing kindness to you. He is one of our family. Go back to his field until the harvest is finished. He will protect you. So Ruth worked in Boaz's fields until the end of the harvest, and still she lived with her mother-in-law, Naomi.
chapter two of the Book of Ruth is arguably the most famous and well-known part of the Ruth story. If anyone remembers anything at all about Ruth from their days in Sunday school, it is usually that she went gleaning. And if you do a quick Google image search for pictures of Ruth, you will find pictures like these. Pictures that show us a beautiful young woman gleaning under bright sunny skies in the abundant harvest field. And it all looks quite picturesque, quite romantic, civilised and pleasant. But in reality, there is nothing romantic or picturesque about the predicament that Ruth and Naomi found themselves in. This is what gleaning really looks like. This is gleaning in the real world. This is what gleaning looks like today. Because gleaning is not romantic or picturesque. It's about desperation and starvation. It's about poverty and vulnerability. It's about everything that goes with being a stranger in a strange land. Let there be no doubt that Naomi and Ruth were in a desperate situation and it's no wonder that Naomi had decided to change her name from Naomi, which means pleasantness, to Mara, which means bitter. This is what she and her devoted daughter-in-law have been reduced to. She has been through the most awful tragedies. First of all, a famine. Then having to go off as a refugee to live in a strange land. And then another famine. Losing her husband and both her sons. And then having to make the decision to pack up and move back home again. Naomi had lost everything. She was bitter and she blamed God, for she believed that God had turned his back on her and left her helpless and hopeless. But the opening verse of chapter two reminds us that even for Naomi, there is still a tiny sliver of hope. There is still a ray of light at the end of the tunnel because there is a relative. A man named Boaz, a man who is wealthy and of high standing in his community and a man who is a man of God. And this is in the time of the judges, a time when we are told that people had turned from God and lived wicked lives. Boaz is still a man of God. And so Ruth took the decision to put her trust in him, to place herself under his care. And in so doing, she placed herself and Naomi under the refuge of God's wings. Although Ruth is not of the Jewish faith herself, she knows that the Hebrew God is a God who provides. He's a God who has given the law. And she knows that if Boaz is truly a man of God, he will keep the law that God has given. And he will not refuse to help the widows who come to his field. For God's law made special provision for orphans and widows and for refugees in the land. The farmers and the landowners were forbidden by law to completely clear their fields. They must leave some of the crop for the poor. That was the law. Boaz went beyond what the law required of him and he offered Ruth water from his own water jars and some of his own lunch told his men not to bother her and so he offered her protection from harassment and abuse and harm. It was no accident that Ruth found herself in Boaz's field and it was no coincidence that on the day she was there 
Boaz himself turned up to see how the harvest was progressing. Not a coincidence, but a God incidence. For God's hand is on this story. God's hand is always on those who trust in him and are obedient to his law of love. For we have a faithful God. God's faithfulness is inextricably woven with our faithfulness to him and our faithfulness to each other as his beloved children. In all our hardships and trials, God is there, for he is everywhere and in every circumstance. Yes, there is no doubt that Ruth and Naomi went through the most terrible experiences, but none of those things could take them out of the love and care of their faithful God. Even in our own personal disasters, God can work through our tragedy. God is at work. Tragedy and hardship does not mean that God has turned his back on us and abandoned us. In the words of Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Or as Paul wrote to the church in Rome, Neither trouble nor hardship, or famine or nakedness, or danger or sword, neither death nor life nor anything else in all creation is able to separate us from the love of God. Chapter 2 of Ruth's story reminds us of the truth of that verse. God can be at work in our lives, bringing a blessing to us even when we do not see it. The unseen hand of God provides for us in rich and surprising ways that we simply do not recognise. And every blessing that we receive, large or small, seen or unseen, appreciated or taken for granted, comes from God's hand. But what about Boaz? What could we learn from his part in this story? Boaz is obedient to the law of God. Ruth and Naomi trust that Boaz is faithful to his faithful God. It works both ways, like our covenant. I will be your God and you will be my people. God will provide, but we need to play our part too. Miracles are indeed possible, but this is not a miracle story. This is a story of good people doing the right thing. This is a story of people who take seriously the commandment to love their neighbour as themselves. This is a story of people who are the hands of God and the body of Christ. Isn't that what we see around us every day? Despite all the terrible stories in the newspapers and on the television, we know that there are good people doing the right thing everywhere we look. Good people currently working in our hospitals and care homes Good people looking out for their neighbours, standing up for justice. Good people keeping us safe and providing for our needs. Good people, like Boaz, are the instruments of God's blessing. And we should recognise that we are all called to be instruments of God's blessing and look for ways that we can be a channel of blessing to one another and to the world. We don't sing those old Victorian hymns and choruses in church anymore, but I am reminded of one that went, Make me a channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of blessing, I pray. 
my life possessing, my service blessing. Make me a channel of blessing today. Perhaps that was Boaz's prayer as he came from Bethlehem to his field. Perhaps that could be your prayer today. God is always working to bring a blessing through the darkness. And sometimes we are given just a small sliver of hope, just like Naomi when she remembered that her husband had a relative called Boaz. Things were still a disaster in her life, but she found her redeemer. She found someone who held the promise of help, protection, security and hope. Through tragedy, life is always moving on towards a blessing. So the story of Ruth reminds us that just because we are going through hard times and distress, that does not mean that God has turned his back on us. That God is able to work a blessing if we can remain faithful to him and put our trust in him. May God bless us all with a deeper faith to trust him more. Our faithful God, who loves his people and blesses his children and answers our heartfelt prayers. Thanks be to God. We come now to a time of prayer where we'll be praying for the world and the people in it. So let us pray. As we think about parts of the world that are broken, we pray for refugees who are rebuked, where the stranger is not welcome. We pray for the broken, damaged ecosystem. And may we take stock and tend to your creation as good stewards. The story of Ruth shows, uh, shows us an abundance of grain and gave Naomi renewed confidence in your blessings. We pray for those whose plates will be empty due to a damaged environment caused through human ignorance. We pray for broken family relationships, broken friendships where hurt runs deep and forgiveness is difficult. We pray that our faithfulness to you can be as loyal as that which Ruth showed. And in that faithfulness, may we welcome all with open arms, leaving anything divisive at the foot of the cross. In our relationship with you, may we remain strong in character and true to you when facing difficult circumstances. We, we pray for the world's broken communication. May that be our communication between ourselves and you, ourselves and other people. And we pray especially for leaders of the world whose communication can be biased and not show faithfulness and justice to all. And we pray especially that we can learn and we can see and we can hear integrity in all that they do. 
We pray for broken bodies. All those who are suffering in this world. We pray especially for those whose lives have been lost to coronavirus. And for the families who are suffering through the loss of a loved one. In a quiet time now we bring, you, bring before you the people in our own hearts and minds. You know each and every one of our prayers, Lord. We offer all these up to you now. Because on the cross, Christ's body was broken to make us whole and save our broken world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. And now the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Shall we join together? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. No matter who you are or where you come from, no matter where you are or what you are facing, no matter how you feel or whether you understand it, the truth is you can rest in the assurance of God's presence, in the knowledge of God's goodness and the certainty of God's love. We leave now with hope, joy and peace, for Christ has indeed come. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.